the network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. What's up, everyone? Chris Netto here. This is MHO, my humble opinion. We are here for uh, another quick episode of what's going on in the AV world. I am joined by my co-hosts. Uh, let's start down in Georgia with uh, Melissa Dillman. How are you? Well, suffering from a little bit of a cold, but other than that, I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing good, sir. There's going to be a little of a clumpness thing coming through every once in a while. There may be a pause for a cough. We get it. Exactly. It's This is now uh, two shows in a row where, where the, the sick bug has gone around. And uh, broadcasting live from the Cayman Islands, it's Outback Mike. How are you, sir? <laughs> How are you, Chris? I'm doing well tonight. <laughs> awesome. See, there's some dedication here. This gentleman is off on a fishing boat uh, somewhere in the middle of God knows where, and he is recording MHO because it's that important to get it back to you, folks. <laughs> let's, hope, let's, let's hope that my cell phone connection keeps it strong enough to uh, not have me drop out. You know what's worse is my internet connection, so let's not even go there. So what we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to start doing some of our pre-show, Cedia pre-show type stuff. And uh, one of the things that I want to get going is, uh, you know, we're commercial integrator people, you know. Uh, not necessarily the magazine, but we are commercial integrators. We work in the commercial side of the AV world. Uh, our brethren on the resi side have the residential show, which is the Cedia show. Uh, that was typically more for the home theater and uh, uh, I guess the, the the TV and home stereo type crowd, but that has evolved into something bigger and better. Um, our friend Vin Bruno, who was uh, formerly with uh, uh, one of our commercial manufacturers, is now the head of Cedia. And uh, we have got some great insight on what's, the, what's coming up on the show and a lot of great material for us to bring topics up for the next couple shows. So let's dive right into a question that's posed out to the media, or excuse me, out to the Twitterverse. Um, Mr. Bruno actually quoted something which may have caused a little rift on the internet. Melissa, are you familiar with this little rift that happened? I am. Um, so Mr. Bruno came out and said he would like to see um, the industry move away from the term integrator. And instead, he suggested that they consider using the word technologist to describe themselves. Technolog so, uh, technologist is his word. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, this, this created so a I know. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Go ahead, Melissa. Melissa, go ahead. Yeah, so it creates this stir and backlash of everybody debating now whether or not... Um, we should try to make a move to change our name, and if so, what would we change it to? Okay, so that's going to be the topic of uh, this episode of MHO, is where are we going to go with this? Now, as com integrators, we first question would be, should we be attending CD Expo? And the other question that comes with that in, in terms of uh, the conversation that's being brought up by Ben Bruno, are we to go down the same path as well. Should we stop calling ourselves integrators and start calling ourselves technologists as well, uh, being that we're all under the same AV umbrella? So let's, uh, let's go to you, Mike. Uh, what are your thoughts on should we be attending the show and should we be calling ourselves technologists or integrators? What's your stance? So I'm, I'm not too familiar with um, the uniqueness of the show. I, obviously not being in the, in the resi world, I'm not really familiar with any of the goings-on that happen there. Um, as far as, uh, so, so I really actually, frankly, have no opinion. I think that there's, it's, it's time for some people to explore the option of attending Cedia, um, just to kind of branch out uh, their options and, and what the information that they're gathering for the industry is. And, and uh, there's going to be different messages at Cedia than there would be at Infocom. So, you know, some people may want to actually explore that. Um, what, what uh, you know, intrigues me about the technologist thing, um, I like the term. The term sounds cool. Right, it just sounds cooler than integrator. But does it really define what we do? 
uh, I, I think Integrator does define that. We take a bunch of different technologies and we make them all work together inside of a space. I, I think that the term Integrator just uh, summarizes you know, our industry better. Um, technologist is, is a cooler term though, so I don't, I don't know I don't know that I, I would necessarily jump on board with it, though. It's it's a little vague. It doesn't really summarize um, what it is that we do, and and I wonder whether or not anybody that's in say IT would take issue with the fact that oh, we're saying we're a technologist, but they're not. Um, so is that more of what his position is? Is is what he's trying to suggest that we all anybody that works with technology, we all actually refer to ourselves as technologists? Is that the gist of it, Melissa? No, I don't, you know, I think if we look, if we go back and, and let's pretend like I remember my days of, of Latin, um, the thing I like about technologists would really break it down into someone who, who perhaps studies technology, um, which obviously we all do, and, and that does describe us well. I'm the, uh, at least a good decade that I know of. Um, trying to tell people what a CTS is, and nobody knows. Um, it's still not clear within the industry what that is, and even if it's not clear in the industry, how do we expect it to be clear to the folks who are buying stuff? They're never going to look up a CTS because they don't understand it. So pop quiz, um, what does CTS stand for? Certified Technology Specialist. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that one. That, that's my vote. <laughs> certified Technology Specialist. Yep. L l my opinion on this is uh, similar to Mike's in that I've never been to a CD show. But I'm intrigued about what's going on on the home side. And I've said it once, once and I've said it a thousand times. Because I'm in the commercial world and I work primarily in the corporate settings, what my customers go home to comes back to me in a form of questions the next day. So I'm intrigued about the technologies that they have at home because they're doing things on iPads. They're doing things with little boxes that they're buying at weird places and odd places and the internet says things. And they're bringing it back and going, hey, I got this, this thing and you connect it to my plant and it tells me to water it and then it tells me what the temperature of my house is all at the same time and it sends off a signal that tells my dog to go pee on a wee-wee pad. I, great. Is that something okay. I, is that something All right. I know? <laughs> now wait a minute. All right, so I guess I'm the only one who's ever attended a CDS show, so okay. Yes. Um, here's the thing. At the CDS show, you're going to see a lot of the same manufacturers that, um, that we use even in the commercial side. The difference between the Cedia show and an Infocom show is that Cedia caters primarily to the guys who sell the gear, the guys who design it, and the guys who install it. So their, their market base that comes to their show and attends are not the end users. All right. So what does that mean? It means that their numbers are going to be a little lower than what maybe we see at an Infocom. However, if I am designing or installing or wanting to learn about product, it means I'm actually going to have time to get to the manufacturer to talk to them. And you may go and find some new manufacturers that you haven't thought of in the past. Um, I was going through the list, and one of them that's attending the show is Just Add Power. If you haven't paid attention to Just Add Power, they've got some pretty cool stuff coming down the line, both commercially and I'm going to assume residentially since they'll be at Cedia. So. Um, I think you would see a lot of overlap and you would have the opportunity to see some folks that perhaps you don't know of but should. Hmm. Mike? So, so my question is, um, did you notice anybody, Melissa, that's on that list that doesn't attend Infocom? If, if somebody was going to make a choice to uh, attend this show from the commercial side of things, what kind of manufacturers or what kind of products you know, is unique to the Cedia show that you know, we don't see at other shows? There were a lot of manufacturers that are not at Infocom that are at Cedia. Um, and of course, I didn't write all those down for a couple of things of why I would be there. One is certainly their education, and we're going to, that's a whole different animal. We're going to talk about that in our next show. Mm -hmm. um, but the educational, educational offerings are phenomenal. 
Um, the second thing is, uh, alluding to what Chris led into, their keynote speaker on Friday is Charlie Kindle, who's the director of Alexa Smart Home for Amazon. If we don't think on the commercial side that these guys are going to want to bring this into their boardrooms, we are way behind the eight ball. I would love the opportunity to get to hear what this guy has to say and know what the CEOs are buying for their homes because I know they're going to want it in their boardrooms. So for me, Cedia has always been the look ahead. It has been the show that I go to. I see new products. I see new ways of using things. And I know that those, those CEOs, those corporate owners, are going to want me to incorporate it in their boardroom down the road. So for me, it's always been a good look ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have to agree with you, Melissa, there on the... Uh, on, on your point about well, on a lot of different points that you brought up as a matter of fact I do believe that voice uh, with Alexa is going to be a uh, a contender in the AV space it's only just a matter of time yes there are security issues but tell that to the people at, I, at, at Apple who were told that you can't bring an Apple iPhone into corporate environment that's just one example. If you want more examples of this, you could pick up uh, Simon Dudley's book. There's a ton of examples of things that should have never gotten to where they are, and then, oh my God, we've had to deal with them since. So uh, that's only one example of, uh, of things that are to come for us. And Chris, you know, what's really amazing is Cedia has been talking about this IoT and security issues for some time now. Because if you don't think those guys who own the boardrooms, who own these corporations, aren't concerned about their own technology at home, this is something CD has already addressed. That I'm afraid that on the on the professional side, we've been a little slower to come to the table with it. So well, we're slower because we have gatekeepers. We've had those gatekeepers in place that are, and I'm not talking about technology gatekeepers. I'm talking about the guy who sits there and goes, "That ain't happening." <laughs> the same guy that says, "You know, you're not putting a." you know, a, a, a $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 projector in this room because I can go to Staples and buy one for X amount of, of dollars and it'll do the job. That's the same gatekeeper who's possibly saying, no, we're not doing that um, because there may be a security issue. Who He doesn't know exactly what the security issue is, but somebody down the line having coffee warned him that there may be some security breaches later on down the line. So yes, those are something that we deal with on a daily basis, and possibly the reason why our um, our side of the AV world hasn't uh, explored as quickly. I'm not going to make excuses. I think that what we need to do is absolutely start. If no, excuse me, excuse me here, not start. We should have been talking about this, um, and just to give the audience a tease, uh, some of the stuff that Melissa dug into. Uh, in a conversation with CDA regarding education is going to be mind-blowing to hear it on our side of the business from a co corporate side because uh, or at least on the commercial side because these are things that we are we're hoping and, 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 and pleading to hear more about at the shows and at seminars and stuff like that and we're not even at the tip of the iceberg yet so to round up this uh, this conversation and to finally answer my question of the technologist uh, versus integrator, I choose integrator. Technologist is for people that love putting fake titles on their uh, on their resumes and <clears throat> business cards and stuff like that. Uh, I'd love to be able to say ninja, integrator, futurist, uh, Svengali of technology, something that rhymes. But I'm not down with that. I don't agree with it. I, I just it sounds kind of elitist. Uh, you know, I look at the integration side as integrating. I am responsible for integrating two, three different types of equipment or more. Uh, but that could be me because that's ingrained in my into my head from being in the industry now 15 years. Maybe the new guys want to be called technologists. That sounds very cool. You could sip your coffee and stroke your long beard at a hipster bar and talk about that sort of stuff. Speaking of beards, Mike, what is your final thoughts on this? Um, I, my final thought is I think I'm changing my title to superlative design consultant. <laughs> I, <laughs> and if you should make it mandatory that you walk around with that hat all the time. I uh, uh, no, you're not going to see this on the show floor. I can promise you that. Well, you know what? Maybe I will just for you, Chris, next year. Who knows? <laughs> you know what? I've seen Bond villains that have thrown hats that have been used them as secret weapons. So I mean, that would be for 
uh, a different generation that actually grew up watching Bond films, which had, used to have cool tech. Now we get to play with it. Look at that. Melissa, your final thoughts on this whole thing? I'm sorry you're wrong, Chris, but I'm going to go with technologist. I like it. Um, but I'm open to anything that makes sense that people understand. So yeah. I don't think integrator is the keyword, but um, whatever it is that makes us better better viewed within the, the details on the show. Yep, and before I go into the details, I just have, I forgot, I have some information here that I do want to share. There were two polls ran this week regarding this technologist versus technology thing. Um, well, excuse me, one poll. Live install, our buddies over in the UK ran something, and uh, they've had 50 votes, and their choices were home tech pro, technologist, integrator, custom installer. Tied for first place is what they would like to be called, home tech pro or custom installer, followed by integrator, followed by technologist. So there's the first uh, soft survey on the uh, technologist versus integrator uh, uh, battle. And uh, a poll that I ran uh, earlier this week as well that's still uh, running, uh, my question was to commercial integrators uh, that will be watching the tech and technology trends coming out of the Cedia show. Currently I've had 16 votes. Of the 16 votes, 38% of them found little value for, for, for commercial AV, while 62 found it to be, you know, find what's coming out of CD to be uh, very interesting and something that they need to be aware of. So there are some numbers for you for the people that need the numbers to know. Um, this has been MHO, and I think you got our humble opinion on this topic and some more. Let's go down to Melissa. Melissa, what is the best way for people to see you, find you, get a hold of you, do what they need to do? <laughs> well, um, real quick, Chris, I'm going to give the, the facts on the show real fast. Um, for anyone overnight. who doesn't know, CDS <laughs> show is September 13th through the 17th in Dallas, Texas this year. Um, the show floor itself is the 15th through the 17th. Um, there are, by the way, 500 plus vendors on the show floor. So that should um, excite some people to go and check that out. Um, one of the other perks with the show is that on Saturday the 17th, there's a meet and greet with the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. I'm just saying. So um, if anybody is interested, they should check out cedia, C-E-D-I-A dot net backslash show. And if you want to register for the show, you can enter in the code cedia 16 mho and that will give you a wave of the $250 fee to attend the floor. And, um, everybody should check that out. As for me, you can find me at Melissa-Dillman at Comcast.com. Also, my big announcement for the day, um, for anybody who's missed me out there in the training world, you can come visit me September 23rd in Boston. I'll be with the Almo E4 AV Tour. And Tuesday, October 18th, I'll be in Dallas, Texas. So if I've got any friends there, uh, make birthday. sure you come by and see me. It's my birthday. Oh, oh it's your birthday. <laughs> come down to Dallas. Exactly. We'll have a good time. That's it. We'll wear a hat. Mike, how do we find you? And now that you are incognito in the middle of the ocean somewhere. <laughs> well, then, uh, because of that, the only way you're going to be able to find me is on Twitter, at <laughs> AXP Mike. Unless, of course, you're going to be at the Dallas Cowboys uh cheerleaders meet and greet at Cedia because I just bought my tickets. <laughs> As a single man, I feel like that's probably the most important event I should be attending this this uh, this year. Well, the second most important event at the Cedia show that you should be attending is the AV Tweet Up, which apparently it's being held in a beer garden near the show floor, and somehow they got a mechanical bull to go there. And if Cedia is listening and the people that are uh, watching our show, please uh, ping or or or, or, or tweet to the CDA people and let them know that we need a periscope out of this. Uh, I'd love to see the periscope for the uh, for, for the keynote speaker from Amazon. That'd be great. And I would love to see drunk people on bowl uh, doing <laughs> AV tweet up. That'd be awesome. Yeah, people um, take take our lead from Infocom. <laughs> share share the information. Use periscope to uh, the advantage of the industry, please. Absolutely, absolutely. Use the tools you have them. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an MHO show. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. This has been MHO. I'm Chris Nutter.